Morning everybody, I'm going to show you quickly how replicators work in Modo 401. I'm going to show you practically rather than explain it because that's usually the best way, isn't it? Um, what I have here is a little TIE fighter, um, cockpit, wing and an instance of a wing all nested together in a mesh list. Um, I need to make a new mesh which is going to be the master for the replication source so I'm going to pull out a polygon here which has 10 segments in X, 10 segments in Z and one segment in Y and then I am going to clone this item for no other reason than I want stacks and stacks of TIE fires uh, so we're going to make sure we're in polygon mode duplicate, clone, pull up Bank, bank. We've got three clones there, and that's enough vectors because a replicator will be made on each one of these little vector points, vertices, apologies, here, here, and all the way through the mesh. I'm just going to quickly rename that replicator source with bad spelling, and now I'm going to make the new item, which is the replicator. Replicator, we're just going to quickly go into its properties. Um, prototype is the item that we want to replicate. So in this, it's actually the body of the TIE fighter. So I'm going to done that. Point source, we're going to call replicator source. And then all of a sudden, we see hundreds and hundreds of bodies. Now, if we switch quickly to the render view, we will see lots of just the bodies, excuse my slow mag, appearing, but that's not what we want. We want to include the child items, and there we go. All of a sudden we have hundreds of TIE fighters stacked up, but the beauty of the replicator is that we can make your original item invisible and also the replicator source invisible. So all of a sudden we have lots of meshes completely invisible sorry, completely visible be with the original source meshes totally invisible, which is very cool. Um, so I'm just going to quickly render this out now. And here we have our TIE fires. Um, didn't take too long to render, four minutes, and we've got a lot of TIE fires. Um, the major thing about replicators, which makes them exceptionally fantastic, is if we go back to replicator source and just switch off the replicators for now if we just use our basic sculpt tools to just muck about with this mesh here we can so we're just putting a bit of deformation in the mesh it's a good word to say if you're Scottish um, the fantastic thing is that the rep oops, sorry the replicators will form their organization based on the source mesh so obviously this has huge impacts on how this can be used through time um, just the possibilities are quite frankly limitless um, so I'm just going to render this view out now um, just to show you how quickly you can start to change things um, very very exciting in fact it's so exciting I think I might just change this a little bit more and finish sculpt yep everything's there there we go okay that's just craziness and just move the camera down I'm gonna render that Okay, so now we have our finished render with the replicator source um, being deformed. Um, the more observant of you may have noticed that just before the render went on, I had the replicator source off. Um, so I just quickly redid the render with the replicator source off so that you can see 
all the TIE Fighters, no Replicator Source and no original TIE Fighter. Uh, there is a bit of polygon mashing, obviously, but that's just because I went crazy with the deformation and also the compactness of the vertices. And also there are a couple of little artifacts, but that has a lot more to do with the fact that I was doing something else in the background of the screen flow while the render was going on, rather than anything to do with Modo, so that's more me than it is anything else. As you can tell, I'm much more of a get in there and have a play about rather than worry about the science of it, but it's very, very, very exciting and the idea of what we can do with this, especially with all the new time and IK parameters that are in Modo 401 are very exciting and they are something I'm going to have to get to explore more. Um, so thanks very much, um, hope that's been of some kind of use and also hope you liked the demo. First time I've used ScreenFlow, that's all very exciting as well. I just can't take this much excitement. I think my heart may explode. See ya.